The social network Photolog gave rise to dozens of characters who became part of Chilean culture. One of them was, Menta Enferma, Sick Mind in Spanish. A user who at first glance looked like a young man interested in gothic fashion and industrial music, but who over time became much more controversial. Sick Mind's real name was Sebastián Álvarez. His makeup eyes, emo hair and Marilyn Manson-inspired clothing earned him hundreds of followers. However, he wanted to be something more than an aesthetic figure of social networks, he wanted fame. This is how the young man launched his musical career within the underground scene of the time. Until that date, at the age of 22, Sick Mind did not appear as a great threat to internet users, despite his songs full of depressive lyrics, which referred to his various psychological diagnoses. But after a couple of years, Sebastian became more than a troll when he expressed his hatred towards dark-skinned people, tattooed and bearded men, communists, and overweight women. His hate escalated to high levels when he created a blog called Shalina's Gordis in which he uploaded photos of overweight women, which he photographed in public places and whom he described with derogatory phrases. This created a strong reaction from the public, who saw Alvarez's ramblings as signs of bigotry and discrimination. Indeed, the young man was beaten by a passenger inside a subway train. When they began to beat me, the people applauded, they mocked, nobody stopped to help me. When they saw me with blood on my face, someone just stopped the situation, he said in an interview in 2011. In much of Sebastian's controversial videos of that time, he was drunk. Later, he confessed his alcoholism and his increasing addiction to cocaine. At age 20, he was diagnosed with borderline personality. This means that my mind becomes my worst enemy, he revealed, due to his homosexuality. Sebastian confessed that he was a victim of bullying in school. I had to endure nine months of insults, beatings, humiliation, and extreme sadness. That year I had my first suicide attempt, he said. His problems led him to move to the south of Chile, to a rural area, Valdivia. Sebastian did not give up his looks and his long walks alone, which alerted some residents of the area, who used to call the police, because he was strange, Despite the above, he struggled to build a life as a couple with Michael Rowe, an American who became her boyfriend. He understands me and we live in peace, he said on Twitter. He even said that Michael helped him to stop his drug addiction. But this happiness quickly broke on September 28 of 2017, when he went missing. After the incident, the police searched for the young man with helicopters and boats on the southern coast, in addition to an intense search carried out by neighbors in the surrounding forest but they found nothing. A series of posts attributed to his partner, Michael, appeared on social media, in which he stated that Sebastian's disappearance would have been voluntary and final. Sebastian left on a suicide mission. That's what he wanted and I let him go. What do you do if your boyfriend wants to commit suicide? If he's young, you try to stop him and get him help. But if he's 31, he calls himself sick mind, and has been under psychiatric treatment most of his life. I told him to do it. But who was Michael Rowe? A former U.S. Marine from California, whose past until now is a mystery. From calm to violent, the ex-Marine, the neighborhood gringo, had a downside, his personality changed as soon as vodka hit him. A daily bottle was what he needed to quench his thirst. Once drunk, he was a cause of problems in the neighborhood. A photograph that Sick Mind posted on his Twitter confirms their alcohol dependence. He tweeted, My 186 cans of beer and 36 bottles of vodka arrived. Looking for a place to die. That was the message that Fabiola, a friend, and neighbor received on her cell phone. There is no way to know if Sick Mind sent this message. The same day Fabiola received Sebastian's message, his sister Maria received another, Sister, this time I am going to make it. Do not tell the family about this, he wrote, Maria remembers that she tried to contact her brother, but the phone was turned off. Concerned, she sent an email to Roe, who confirmed that his partner was gone. According to him, every time they argued, 
sick mind, would go where he could find peace. The young woman told Roe to report the disappearance to the police. And so he did. Eight days later, Commissioner Carlos Calao knows this well from his years in the Homicide Brigade, his impression of the case is clear, Sebastian and his partner had a relationship where alcohol was always present. We're talking about an ex-marine, someone trained to kill. Besides, he took eight days to report the incident. For me, the hypothesis of homicide gains relevance, explains the former detective. The opinion is shared by the family of sick mind, who don't trust Roe either. Today the whereabouts of Michael Roe is unknown. Did he return to the United States? The police, when consulted, don't give any answers. Two years after his disappearance, a SoundCloud user named Ment and Firma published a strange audio. When analyzed, the audio provided a Morse code that translates into a code of letters. This code hasn't been broken yet, the audio spectrogram reveals a strange image that resembles a face, but whose? What do you think? Is Sick Mind still alive and sending us clues about his current situation? Put your opinion in the comments below and subscribe.